Silk painting for beginners. The topic is how to separate one element from another so they don't bunch up, but without making the image very contrasting. This will be silk neck scarf, which is very easy to repeat. I'm using colored silk again. It's a cool light gray color. I draw with a vanishing marker that I've become so fond of lately. This blue is not very visible, so I'm going to change it to a brighter color. I will paint a next scarf and first I will draw the border or margins. The design will be made up of random geometric shapes, simple enough. The accuracy of the lines is not important, so there is no change of screwing up the drawing or drawing the line incorrectly. As I promised, this is a very simple drawing that's easy to repeat. By the way, you can draw a circle with a plate. I showed it in this video. My idea is to place one figure under another to show how they are separated from each other in space. And now that I have the main three figures in the center outlined, I add a few small elements. I love these markers, really. With them you can sketch directly on silk instead of drawing on paper and then pinning it underneath. Now I'm going to apply resist. As I want to paint the scarf in light color, I decided to choose a subtle light blue color of resist. And as usual, there are a metal tip screwed on my resist tube. Before starting to paint, the resist should dry properly. And I'm going to use textile paints. My colors are lemon yellow, purple and fusion. As always, the plate is my palette, bristle flat and round synthetic brushes. And first, I wet the figure with water. This figure is a kind of on top, so it will be the lightest one. And towards the edges, I will darken it a little, make uh, smooth transitions. And I don't want to make the image very contrasting, but rather quite close in both saturation and color. I will add a little pink color. If you have already been on my channel, you know that I love variety in color. And you really don't need to buy a lot of colors, especially if you are just starting to paint silk. And besides, not everyone can afford it. Three or four paints are usually enough to make the image painterly. Now I paint the circle almost the same color as the top figure but I make it darker in the places where the top figure was lighter. You could say that I'm playing on the contrast, but since I plan to make the image delicate in color, the contrast is not strong. And so this corner immediately pulled forward into the foreground. I leave the palette in the frames so you can see how the colors blend. Now I'm using a darker color again to emphasize this sort of shadow. The triangle will be slightly different in color from the other two figures. Let it be pinkish. And this purple shadow 
takes it to the background. And once again, I amplify this effect. I enjoy watching the marker traces disappear. I really love it. This is where the paint started to flow. And while this place remains wet, you can try wiping it off with the paper tissue. It got better, but I'll wash this spot out with water and wipe it off again with the tissue. And here I take a different approach. I don't get that area wet with water, but I immediately paint with color and then soften the borders with water. If I do it quickly, there are no halos. And in the same way, I add a variety of colors, enhancing the shadow. And the background. I'm going to do it in the wet, but I want to keep the native color of silk as much as possible. Only in a couple of places I will bring the circle to the foreground. I have all these set ones that I like to work on colored silk very much. The color gives you the mood, sometimes it dictates it, and I want to keep that soft gray color. You probably paint white silk, then you can slightly tint the background or leave it white, that's as you like. Still, I've decided to add black color. It's to add accents in shadows. And they don't have to be the same saturation everywhere. And on this side, I want to highlight this circle a little bit too. And again, I add accents. The principle here is very simple. In order to keep all the elements of your image from blending into one whole spot, you just want to paint next to a light spot with a dark one. This can come in handy when you are painting a bouquet, for example, and you need to create a space between flowers to separate one from another. Margin. I add a little water to the purple paint and stir it properly. I paint in both directions, so there are no halos. Oops, these things happen. It's not big deal. I just blur the area with water. Today our elements are flat, but in time we will paint three-dimensional ones. By the way, on the subject of volumes and space, I have a playlist on my channel in case you haven't seen it yet. 